Hey guys, Neon Nezi, back again with another D6 video. And today, we are going to be talking about scenario, guys. Normal, hard, and hell mode, and the requirements to complete all of them. We have on the way to OP Gaming to thank for this. On my Francisca review, his or her comment was, Good video. Need a vid to teach newer players like me on what kind of team we can use to farm hell mode for orbs like the requirements on how many stars, 5 stars or 6 stars, how far they need to be awakened, skilled up, etc. I have a defense-based team with Paper Fan, Paper Eve, Paper Soho, and Paper Jun at level 50. I can't manual pass Hell 1-2. Thanks. So, guys. First of all, let me just start this video off by saying that everybody's team is going to be different. Why? Because this game is all reliant on RNG, guys. The heroes that we summon, there's no guarantee that they're going to be summoned by everybody else out there. Meaning, some people might have an abundance of healers or an abundance of attackers. Whatever, guys. I'm going to tell you guys about three different teams that I think that you guys can run. I'm going to make them as broad as possible. And then we're going to be talking about the requirements just like on the way to OP Gaming asked for. So guys, before we do anything, let me just do some shameless advertising here. Destiny Void, guys. Our guild is still looking for members. Please join us because I think that Destiny 6, the game as a whole, has a long way to go. And hence, so can this guild. So, first off, guys, let's start off with the teams that I think that people can run, okay? There are three, theme there are three themes. Themes? Excuse me, sorry. Three teams that I think people can run. One is the Risky Nuker Comp the full-on tank comp, and the hybrid comp. Now, the Risky Nuker, guys, it's in the name. It's risky because you're using Nukers. But this kind of team, guys, will give you the fastest clear time. You're basically running three or all four damage dealers, and they're outputting so much damage that it pretty much negates the damage that the other people deal to you, that the opponent deals to you, or you're killing them so fast they don't get the chance to deal any damage to you. Now you guys can make this Risky Nuker team a little bit safer, or actually a lot safer, if you guys use damage dealers that scale with HP or defense. And honestly guys, in the meta or the fashion of the monsters being used, the most popular ones right now in the game, I think are defense scaling units. So guys, with Risky Nuker comp, you guys want um, three or all four nukers, and if you guys are running three nukers, then the fourth slot I would give to a buffer. Someone to buff defense or attack, depending on how your damage dealers scale. You guys want them to have a lot of damage, both AoE and single target. AoE for the uh, first two stages, and then the final stage, guys, you guys need single target or basically things that will hit one particular mob for a ton of damage for the boss. Now let's move on to the full-on tank team. This team, guys, is basically like Wolverine. Never dying, guys. You think you're gonna die, but you won't. Simply because you have so many buffs and so many shields or so many heals that the damage that the opponents deal onto you is completely negated. This is by far the safest team that you guys can run, but at the same time, it is also the team that is going to take the longest clear times, guys. Basically, you guys want to have four healers or four support mobs that can give you guys shields, debuffs on the opponent, buffs onto you. You guys get my point. I felt like I had something else to say there, but I didn't. Now, the last team, guys, is a hybrid. And as the name suggests, you're taking the best of the Risky Nuker and the best of the full-on tank. For hybrid guys, again, everybody teams are going to be different because nobody's going to be pulling the same exact much as everybody else. But, however, I think the standard um, formation would be two damage dealers and then a healer or a buffer on your third slot. If you guys run two damage dealers and a healer, then on the fourth slot, you guys can run another healer or a uh, damage dealer. And if you guys run two damage dealers and one buffer, then I would definitely recommend a healer for your fourth striker position. 
That being said, guys, let's move on. So, guys, let's start from the very beginning. Normal mode. The first mode that you guys will have access to. For this, guys, I like to go onto Google and search for synonyms for easy. Uncomplicated, undemanding, unchallenging, effortless, painless, trouble-free, facile, or facile. Facile? Simple. Straightforward. Elementary. You guys watch uh, Sherlock? He always goes, that's elementary, my dear Watson. That's what he means, guys. It's too damn easy. No stack requirements for normal guys. Just clear it with whatever mobs you guys have. As you guys clear this whole stage, you guys will be getting rewards that will help you guys progress and get ready for the next two modes to come. Now, hard mode, guys. When you guys first break into hard mode, you guys will immediately realize that you guys can no longer auto. And you guys are going to have to manual it. So, turn off that auto skill use button because if you guys run a manual and your team just starts making AI decisions, it's going to be very bad for you. I would first of all suggest you guys have to pick one of those teams, guys. You guys have to pick one of those teams because you got to first have to decide what kind of team can you guys make depending on the amount that you guys have. I know I'm saying this a lot, guys, and it's like a no shit thing now but it's very important guys make do with what you have i would recommend guys for this stage you guys want to have all of your units not for the first two points guys i don't know what else to call these guys let's call these five points okay silvus medina inua jin Tragar. five points for the first two points guys you guys might not need this but by the time you guys get to get to the third point which is inua you guys are definitely going to need um you guys have a team of four, right? You guys are going to want to have them all at level 50, five stars, or a, close to level 50, and awakened at least once, guys. Whether you guys have all five-star monsters or all three-star monsters, you guys should be able to awaken anything relatively easy for the first time just because the materials required are of such a low grade. I would suggest you guys first spend a lot of time on Silvis and Medina, because Sylvus will give you HP-based runes, which will help you guys build your hybrid or full-on tank team. And then Medina, which can help you guys build your Risky Nuker or your hybrid team. Basically, both of them are required if you guys are going to build a hybrid team. Now, if you guys... Oh, sorry. Did I say Sylvus and Medina? I hope I did. Now, guys, if you guys have defense scaling units, I would suggest you guys do Inua. Here's the trick, guys, to farm. You guys have to auto. No one is going to be able to farm if... No one's, no one's going to be able to farm runes effectively because, from my experience, guys, the best runes that you guys can get are percentage-based runes. I'll show you guys what those are in a second. Percentage-based runes, guys, from my experience, for every... I would say, in Hell Mode, I did about 500 keys, I think. And for every 500 keys, guys, I will get at least one to three um, percentage-based runes. So that's about 100 runs in total, guys. So every 100 runs, you guys will be getting one or three percentage-based runes, depending on how good your luck is. Now, how do you guys auto, guys? The guy OP Gaming just told me he or she's having trouble autoing. Well, here's how you do it, guys. First of all, meet these... Meet these three stat requirements, guys. Not stat requirements, these requirements for three stars, guys. If you guys see, you guys get a stage conqueror effect, which basically means that you guys will increase your damage dealt and you guys will receive decreased damage from the opponents. I would also suggest that you guys have always an advantage sign right over here or an equal sign. Equal signs work as well, maybe not as good, but they work. Never have a disadvantage, especially if it's your first time trying this wave, because you're probably going to suffer. Um, what else? Here's the thing, guys. If you guys are first breaking into hard or hell, you guys do not need to three-star everything, guys. One-star everything if you have to, because once you guys complete the ninth stage, on any point, you guys will be getting a ruby reward from your achievements, guys, which is... Fantastic, guys. Here's the key to autoing, guys. You guys don't have to three-star everything. But once you guys... I would suggest you guys three-star every 
two stages, guys. So either one or two, three star them. And then, if I could scroll, stage three or four, three star one of them. Stage five or six, three star one of them. Stage seven or eight, three star one of them. And as you guys can see, this is how I've been doing things, guys. The reason is, the runes are dropped... The same runes are dropped in every two stages, guys. Stages 1 and 2 will drop stage 4 runes. Stage, uh, sorry, slot 1 runes. Stages 2, 3, and 4... Oh my god, let me just start over. Stages 1 and 2 will drop slot 1 orbs. Stages 3 and 4 will drop stage 2 orbs. Stages 3, uh... 5 and 6 will drop stage 3 slot 3 orbs. And... Um, stages 7 and 8 will drop slot 4 orbs. Meaning that if you guys can auto at least one in every two stages, you guys will be able to auto and farm these runes with relative ease. What's next? Um, I would suggest... I'll show you guys what I do for the boss stages in a bit. Sometimes you guys can manipulate the AI so that you guys can take out the outside two mo two monsters, and then focus it just on the boss. Also, guys, um, I would always recommend having at least one break sh break uh, skill, because in the final stage, as I'm about to show you, if I don't have a break skill, the opponent build build builds up this really annoying uh, damage reflection shield, which really messes me up. Alright guys, so do that uh, three-starring thing, just stage three, three star one in every two stages for Silvus, Medina, or Inua, and then just blow through Jin and Tragar, guys. You guys do not have to get uh, three stars on these, because I think, personally, these are the runes that I would not even bother farming, guys. Reason being, even if I get all of my... Um, if in, even if I get one of my units with nothing but these, um, these yellow runes, which give me crit rate, these concentration orbs that give me crit rate, guys, the maximum crit rate that I've seen, even on the most professional players, guys, is like 30%. 35 maybe, but still, that's basically saying that you have a 2 in 3 chances to not crit, which I think is pretty useless, guys, and that is with all four concentration orbs and having some crit rate um, stats on your crest. Tragar guys, do I even have to go into why I would not farm here? Because these runes, these punishment orbs, will be giving you guys critical damage, which only come into effect once you guys crit something. Without concentration orbs, your crit rate stats are probably going to be below 20. You guys really want to have that much crit damage without even the guarantee that you guys are going to be critting without the guarantee with sorry with the guarantee that you guys are only going to be critting one per four hits i don't think so guys i think that i would uh take Jin if i have stuff like gunter or um what's that guy's name julian guys who actually can buff his own crit rate but other than that guys i wouldn't really bother with uh Jin or trigar just blow through them one star or two star, then get it over with. Now, in hell, guys, this is where trouble really starts to build up because already in hard mode, you guys have to start off with manual, right? And in hell, you guys really have to start focusing. You guys have to get ready to dodge and run. It's not very straightforward anymore. Monsters deal tons of damage. You guys are going to have to start getting ready, ready uh, getting used to the rhythm that these stages bring, guys. For hell mode, I would suggest getting at least two of your main four uh, heroes, guys, at least two of them, to six stars, and awakening them three times, guys. Now, these stats are a bit higher than they need to be, but these are the stats that I would recommend you guys have, so you guys have a relatively easy time farming through this whole thing, guys. Now, look, guys, even before I got to uh, Tragar, I have all four of my core units at six stars and awakened at least three times. I haven't even finished Hell Mode, guys. Still have that last one to do, which I'll try to do in a bit. We might fail. Just saying. Now, guys, let's go into Awakenings, guys. I'll show you guys um, Runes and Awakenings. 
I feel like there's something that I'm forgetting to talk about. But if it comes up in this video, I'll mention it. If not, I'll just mention it in another video. But I hope to get everything out of the way in this video. So guys, let's look at my Jun because he is the best monster that I have. I have awakened him five times, guys. Not because it is required. Mark my words. Not because it is required. I did this for you guys. So I, can just, I, I can show you guys what happens when you awaken the monster. First of all, guys, let's just talk about that. Let's get that out of the way. First time you guys awaken something, guys, it's going to be relatively easy. Even five star monsters. The reason why I say awaken them at least three times to clear hell is because, guys, we can basically separate units into three categories, all right? HP, attack, and defense. If you guys see from slot one to four, you guys have HP, attack, and defense. By stage three, guys, you guys are increasing two of those three stats, guys. So here is a really bad example, and this is the worst case scenario that could happen, that from stages one to three, I buff my HP and attack, but not my defense, because my Jun is a defense scaling monster. But guys, two out of three, in a lot of units, guys, by stage three, you guys will be buffing that one unit, or that one stat that really affects the unit the most. Also, guys, in stage uh, 2, you guys will be able to do crests, which I think offer just that little bit of this little tiny sliver of difference, guys, that can really make all the difference in the world. So basically, guys, that's why I want you guys to um, awaken them three times. Let me now show you guys my orbs. I have now been in hell, guys, for about two days, and you guys might be wondering why I have not completed it yet. It is because, guys, I have been working super hard to get all of my slots on 4-star percentage runes, guys. If you guys um, pause the video, as I just showed you guys, all of these have percentage main stats, guys. Reason being, no matter what your unit is, guys, if you guys have percentage-based stats, or per percentage-based main stat on your orb, you guys will be getting the most bang for your buck. If you guys want to pass Hell Mode, however, I would suggest you guys have at least all 3-star orbs. Now, with 3-star orbs, guys, I would recommend you guys only take them to level 9. Actually, only level 6. If it's really, really worth it, and you guys think you're using that monster a lot, and you guys are really far away from farming 4-star orbs, then I would suggest you guys take them to level 9, but not very much, guys, because once you guys are in Hard Mode, just in hard mode, guys. You guys are very, very close to hell mode. Very close to farming 4-star orbs, which are the highest tier of orbs that you guys will be able to farm in the game. So, no need to, you know, go all out and have, like, a ton of 3-star uh, star, three star orbs, guys. But, um, again, guys, like I said, before you guys complete hard, or before you guys complete hell, farm that particular stage stages Silvis and medina to get hp and attack or inua if you guys have defense skilling units just to get the best stats you guys can guys because here's the thing guys if you guys complete everything within like a day it's not going to be fun the fun thing about games like this is that the grind guys the pain and the endurance that you guys have to possess to go through it get better and then finally accomplish something guys Once you guys do get 4-star percentage orbs, I would suggest getting them all to all to 12, Enhancement 12. After Enhancement 12, guys, at Enhancement 15, you guys will basically double one of your substats. But I don't think it's worth taking them to uh, level 15. Because already at level uh, 12, I think you guys only have like a 5% chance of success with the orb enhancement. Which is just crazy, guys. You guys are going to be spending like... Like hundreds and thousands of gold on every level after 12 which is just not worth it guys in my opinion maybe once I get richer with gold I'll try but until then guys not going to do it so guys that being said let me show you guys the team that I use this is my um, this is my a risky this is actually a hybrid comp guys. this is actually a hybrid comp it's not, I, 
I would hope to make it risky because that way I will get the shortest time, guys. The reason why I brought an Adonis, guys, is because I need that break. I need that break skill because these things in this particular, this Tragar section, guys, have this uh, damage reflection shield. And it's just so annoying, guys. So just run around. Buff. We're ready for the first wave. Where are they? Did we just bug out? Okay. Um. Hello? Monsters? Oh, we're just wasting time here. Alright, let's wait for like a few more seconds. If they spawn, they spawn. If they don't, we're just gonna... This is a bug. And it's a very interesting bug. Alright, guys, let's not... Let's not waste time. We just wasted five... We just wasted five energy, or five keys. With this, guys, I have completed Hell Mode. I'll be into... Um, I'll be getting into uh, Nightmare, and then I can show you guys a tutorial for that once I'm done. Again, guys, you guys can always make it work by, like, running around getting all your skills off cooldown, but the stats and the requirement that I've told you guys are such that you guys have an easy time farming hard or or getting through hard and hell mode, guys. So, buff, nuke. Burst him down. How? Okay, I'll just get these two. And on a shield now, because it's starting to hurt. Buff. We didn't really need the buff. Never mind the buff. Jesus Christ, they got the damage reflection shield. Which is what I have been... Which is what I have been uh, struggling with all this time. Right here, guys, you guys want a stripper. Oh my god. Well, my shield just ran out. And now we cannot do any damage to them. Because. Because they have those damage reflection shields up. Oh my lord. These guys ever stop. Alright, thank you. We finally stopped. And, oh my lord. Ah, oh, crap. I would not recommend doing this, guys, but just so the video does, it doesn't go very long. I'm just gonna revive. You guys basically want to break their shields before they can do their, uh, before they can bring up the damage reduction. Alright, guys, so we're just gonna wait here for a little bit. Again, guys, this is the only stage that I've ever had to use. That's the first time, guys. Believe it or not, that's the first time I've ever had to use Revive on my team. Just because the damage reflection shield, guys, is so annoying. But that's 30 crystals for... I've been farming so much, guys. And it's just that if I want to pass this stage, I'll probably have to bring in two units with two different breaks, guys. So I can, like, spam the breaks. Which, um... I'm not gonna do that, guys. Because... Not everyone has the perfect uh, perfect team, right? So damage buff. Crap. If I don't use this, will she, will, will she still go? Alright, well, we, 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 we hit the boss. Thank God. Nuke. So this is why I like to call my team kind of a risky team comp. Because we kind of, uh, we kind of do. Nuke the boss down, at least. So less than a minute, guys. If I had another monster with a break, I would not have to have to use those 30 crystals. Do not follow my example. Also, guys, the easiest uh, slot to farm for percentage is slot uh, 4, the one with the crit rate, because you guys will always only get a percentage on the crit rate slot, guys. So once you guys get a 4-star orb on the slot 4, it's guaranteed to be percentage. With the others, it's not that, it's not that simple. Like I said, it's like in every hundred runs, you guys will get anywhere from one to three percentage-based orbs. 
but I hope this helps, guys. At the end of this video, guys, I just want to point out something. My first video that I uploaded was like six days ago, guys. After 18 hours of playing the game. I have not... I think I just broke my first week into Destiny 6, guys. So, there are definitely people out there that have more experience than me in the game. But this is my experience, guys. And it has worked for me, and hopefully it will work for you guys. That being said, I hope I helped you guys out. I hope I answered a lot of questions. If you guys have any questions or think I missed out anything, please tell me in the comments down below. If you guys like my content, please tell your friends. Bring them over to the channel. Subscribe if you guys like my content. If your friends like my content, ask them to subscribe as well. And until next time, guys, Neon out.